In the previous class, we have learned about reflection of light, reflection through spherical, uh, from spherical surfaces, concave mirror, convex mirror, and even plane mirror. Okay. And in it, we have learned about those of the sign conventions, then image formation by the spherical mirrors, then what uh, we have learned about that sign convention, mirror formula, then magnification due to spherical uh, surfaces and all. So in today's class, we will learn about the refraction of light and how this refraction of light takes place <coughs> the laws of refraction all will be learned here okay and the main purpose of our today's class will be refraction through spherical um, surfaces like that of what uh, the convex lens and concave lenses okay so what is uh, this refraction so refraction may be defined as the phenomenon of bending of an oblique light ray when it passes from one medium to another medium having different optical densities okay and the bending should start from uh, at the point okay uh, at one point between uh, that interface of the two media so we may define as what the phenomenon of bending of an oblique light ray when it passes from one medium to another medium having different optical densities at the interface of the two media is known as what refraction of light the phenomenon is most familiar with light waves because when we consider light as waves then it will be very much uh, evident that that this phenomenon of refraction of light can be explained okay this phenomenon of light can be explained when light is considered or taken as light waves light has a dual property you know uh, light can be considered as particles particles of light we call it as photon so we may take that in a beam of light photons are moving okay so this beam of light can be treated as particles okay and this light can be considered as particle and on the other hand light can be considered as also what light waves so waves i mean so when light is considered as web, this phenomenon of refraction or bending can be explained when light is considered as waves. Okay. So when light passes from a less dense medium, for example, air, okay, you can call it this as rarer medium also, to a denser medium, okay, that like that of glass, it is refracted toward the normal. That means it, it bends toward the normal. Got it? And the opposite is also correct. Okay, when you when you uh, move that light, when you allow to light pass through from a denser medium to a rarer medium, then the refracted ray moves away from a normal. Okay, this occurred because the light wave are slow down. I mean, for this pr uh, previous one, this occurred because the light waves are slow down by the denser medium causing them to change the direction. So why there is a change in direction takes place at the interface, starting from the interface and when it enters toward uh, another medium having different optical densities, it is because that uh, the speed of the light changes, okay? And if the speed of the light decreases, then it will bend toward the normal. If the speed of the light increases, then it will bend away from a normal, right? <clears throat> see this is the thing that I have told you the refracted ray bends away from the normal when light travel from a denser medium to a rarer medium rarer medium means less dense okay one now let's see some laws of refraction there are two laws of refraction okay the first law is that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal all lie in the same plane and meet at a point got it that is known as the first law of refraction and the second law is the law that is concerning about the sign of angle of incidence and the sign of angle of refraction got it 
So the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always bears a constant ratio. Got it? That ratio sine of I divided by sine of R, okay, this will be always a constant. Sine I divided by sine R. What is this I? This I is the angle of incidence. And R is what? Angle of refraction. You might have learned this in lower class, okay? That sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always bear a constant ratio and that constant is known as refractive index of that medium. Of that medium means of that second medium with respect to the first medium. Got it? That is known as refractive index. And this refractive index gives you the extent of the refraction. That means how much bending, okay? How much bending, the extent of bending of the refracted ray depends upon the refractive index of that second medium when you compare with that of the first medium. We generally say these as what? Refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium, right? And this second law is also known as Snell's law. And you will see here, suppose if a light is incident, okay, a light ray is incident on to this glass medium. Let's take it that this blue color is a glass. So from this white, that means from this uh, air medium, let's take it that this is air medium. The first medium is air medium. And the second medium here, we can take it this as glass. So when light ray passes from the rarer medium to a denser medium, what happened? Instead of going straight like this, then what happened? The light ray bends toward the normal so that this is a refracted ray. Incident ray, okay, and this is the refracted ray. This is the original incident direction of the incident ray, okay? So the angle between the incident ray and the normal at the point of incidence, this angle we call it as angle of incidence. And the angle between the normal and the refracted ray, this yellow line is a refracted ray, we call it that angle as what angle of refraction denoted by small r, okay? So this sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always bears a constant ratio, okay? And that ratio we call it as refractive index and that refractive index is constant okay for this pair of media whether you are taking glass here uh, air and glass even if your angle of incidence is changed then what happen your 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 what refractive index will not change as long as you are not changing this air and glass so for this particular pair of media refractive index is constant irrespective of the angle of incidence okay now <clears throat> this is a refraction in the case of what uh, the glass slab got it this blue color is a glass slab and white is what air so what happened when light travel from this what air medium to glass and then when it emerge out again in the same air medium from the glass then we call it this light ray as what immersion ray immersion okay this is the actual incident direction and this is the immersion ray that means it emerges out from the glass medium to the air medium again so we call it this as immersion ray and sometimes we may also call it this angle as angle of emergence denoted by small e angle of emergence okay so this angle of emergence e here it is denoted by r but it may be denoted by e this angle e and this angle of incidence these two will always be equal that means in the case of glass slab the opposite faces where the light enters and where the light emerges out these two faces are parallel so what happened in such okay uh, opposite faces are parallel what happened angle of incidence is always equal to angle of emergence got it and what happened 
as these two are equal what happened the emergent ray and the incident ray these two rays will be always parallel okay so in the case of refraction through a glass slab what happened incident ray and the emergent ray are always parallel clear and see there is a shifting of this light ray actually the incident light ray is supposed to be here had there been no glass lab then what happened the incident ray would have been moving along this part right due to this glass lab what happened the ray shifted here that means the incident ray which was supposed to be here has been shifted here so we call it this light ray as what uh, this shifting of this light ray emergent ray the distance between these two incident ray and the emergent ray the perpendicular distance we call it that as what lateral displacement lateral means sight okay displacement shifting so it has been shifted from this part to this part sidewise so we call it that perpendicular distance between these two ray that means incident ray and the emergent ray we call it that as lateral displacement and in the case of glass lab it depends upon uh, it means your lateral displacement depends upon the angle of incidence also directly proportional if angle of incidence increases lateral displacement will be more and it also depends upon the thickness of the glass slab this thickness more the thickness more displacement will be there got it that is about little bit about uh, the idea for that of what uh, refraction through glass slab now let's see about the different uh, refractive index for different uh, media okay this is for air ice water when you look through here then what happened this refractive index is highest in the case of diamond 2.42 okay and least for air or vacuum for vacuum we take it as one and for that of dry air it is but 1.0003 which is approximately equal to that of vacuum so we generally take a refractive index of vacuum or dry as air as simply what one got it and you may find from this uh, what table that this relative density uh, this I mean what uh, or yes optical densities or rather refractive index is not same with that of mass densities mm -hmm. got it mass density and this what uh, optical densities are little bit different okay density we know that it is mass per unit volume we call it that density as mass density but in the case of this optical density or light density it is not like that you will see in the case of kerosene kerosene is lighter than what water right kerosene is lighter than water i mean in the mass density so what happened uh, this kerosene float above the water right because density of kerosene is less than density of water mass density i mean but in the case of optical density you will see that density of water optical density or refractive index you can say it is only 1.33 but in the case of kerosene it is 1.44 so what happened your uh, refractive index of more mass density is having less optical density than that of this what having lesser mass density that means in the case of mass density water is more than kerosene but in the case of what optical density kerosene is more than that of water so this mass density and optical densities are slightly different okay don't think that if the mass is uh, if the density is more i mean mass density is more don't think that it will be optically denser got it yes that is the idea that i want to share with you now let's take it as refraction for prism okay refraction for prism in the case of prism what how will you define a prism now you may want to define that a prism is a transparent medium bounded by so and so but we can't uh, define it in that way okay having different what uh, this uh, square faces or rectangular faces three rectangular faces and two triangular faces not bounded by not you have to you should not define not in that way rather 
now when you light pass when you allow to pass light to this prism then it will pass through this one of the face like this and it emerges out here like this so we may define uh, prism as a transparent medium bounded by two refracting faces okay two refracting faces these faces and these faces inclined to each other making an angle okay making an angle here known as angle of prism so you may define as prism as what it is a transparent medium bounded by two refracting faces inclined to each other making an angle known as angle of prism okay you may define in that way as prism now when light passes here what happened this is an incident ray normal at the point of incidence what happened as light travels from rarer medium to denser medium so let's take it this uh, prism as a glass prism so when light travels from rarer medium to denser medium we know that it bends toward the normal so it will bend here this is the original incident direction of the incident ray okay this light ray i mean this is the original incident ray but when it emerges uh, when it enters into this glass medium it will bend toward the normal and it splits up here if it is white light okay it will split up into seven constituent colors and it will be immersed out again now see in the case of glass prism the interface of that incident and that of the immersion rays these two interfaces they are not parallel unlike that of the what glass layer so these two will not be parallel the incident ray and the immersion ray will not be parallel here why because the opposite faces that means the interface of these air and glass glass and air they are not parallel got it so it emerges out and it is because of these two uh, because of this what uh, splitting of this white light into its constituent color had there been a screen here then it would have formed the patches of color okay that patches of color so often due to dispersion of white light into seven constituent colors that often on the screen we call it those patches of different colors okay we call it that as spectrum okay now what happened these different colors why they are splitting like this because it is due to that of the what refractive index refractive index depends upon the wavelength of light incident on it as this white light consists of seven colors that means it we may take that this white light consists of seven seven wavelengths of light so for those different wavelengths of light that means for different colors what happen it will be having different angle of refraction different angle of refraction means it has different refractive index and so what happened it will what disperse or split it into seven colors and for those of seven different refracted rays it will have different emergent rays got it now the angle between the incident direction and the immersion ray that angle we call it as angle of deviation what is this angle of deviation angle between the incident ray and the immersion ray we will call it that as angle of deviation so for these different colors this will be violet indigo blue green yellow orange and the last will be red okay so what happened for these different colors what happened it will have different angle of deviation got it so angle of deviation for red is the least and that of the violet will be what the highest okay so your violet will have the highest angle of deviation and so it will be deviated most and so what happened it will keep on decreasing with indigo blue green yellow orange and the red will be having least angle of deviation got it we will learn this in higher class in details okay now this is an example <coughs> of uh, the refraction of light now see from this okay 
sunlight is incident on it and from that fish light is being refracted and the refracted rate reaches to our eye and we may see the position of the fish somewhat raising upward we call it this as apparent whatever we see okay that is actually not the actual position that position of the fish we call it here which is a little bit raised upward this as the apparent position and this is the actual position or the real position of the fish okay so this is due to the refraction okay okay of light the light seems to be coming out from somewhere there and the position of the fish appears to be somewhat raised this is not the actual apparent position and the actual position is somewhere below it okay let's see about refraction by spherical lenses so just to know this refraction by spherical lenses uh, let's try to know the, some of the terms concerning about this uh, spherical lenses spherical lenses are lenses okay are a transparent medium bounded by spherical surface suppose if this is a glass and if this surface is bounding this glass medium is of spherical surface then we may call it that lens as spherical lenses okay it may be either convex like this or it may be concave got it so this is known as what convex lens the first one or you can call it as double convex or converging lens also and this one is what double concave or simply concave or diverging lens got it suppose if there had been a spherical surface like this got it this spherical surface for this surface i mean if there had been a spherical surface sphere like this then this center of that spherical surface we call it that center as center of curvature got it and the middle point of the lens inside the lens we call it that as optical center and when light ray passes parallel to the principal axis okay line a line passing through center of curvature and optical center that line we call it as principal axis so a light ray parallel to the principal axis after incident onto this spherical lens refracts and it meets at a particular point on the principal axis that point we call it as focus so there will be two center of curvatures for different spherical surface for this one center is here for this spherical surface okay you may take it that sphere is on this side so what happened this will be the center of these spherical surfaces okay we call it this as first center of curvature and this as a second center of curvature why because when light incident the first spherical surface is this on the left side for so for this left side spherical surface each center will be here so we will call it this as first center of curvature and it may be denoted by c1 here it may be it is denoting by twice f but in some textbook you may find this as c1 why because this is the first center of curvature because this this is the first center or uh, first spherical surface where the light meet okay and after refraction this will be the second spherical surface and for this spherical uh, spherical surface this is the second center of curvature so you may denote it this by c2 okay it is here this is c1 and this is c2 got it but here it is drawn as c1 and this as c2 this is a matter of notation only okay but it should be actually it should be this should be c2 and this should be c1 got it and your radius of curvature will be also this one will be what r2 and the radius of curvature from here to here will be r1 got it this will be focus f1 and this will be focus f2 okay same is the case in the case of what uh, that of a concave lens okay this is an optical center and this will be the spherical surface for example this one is the first spherical surface where light meets so this will be called as first center of curvature denoted by c1 similarly on that side also for this spherical surface 
there will be another center of curvature in that case what happened it will be c2 why because this is the first spherical surface where light meet and this will be the second so that center will be second center of curvature denoted by c2 okay so the line passing through this center of curvatures you can say that will surely pass to the optical center and that line we may call it as principal axis from here to the center of curvature we may call it this as radius of curvature and this radius of curvature will be also equal to that of radius of curvature on this right hand side and if they are equal then we may call it this concap lens as simply what double concap lens or concap lens if the radius of curvature are different then there will be a different name okay you will learn more in detail in higher classes about this also uh, it may not be only of these two type convex and concave there may be different type of lenses okay plano concave concave or convex convex or concave like that there will be a different name for that one we will learn in the higher class okay when you go to class 12 right yes now see uh, if a light uh, rays okay if a light if light rays parallel to principal axis after incident onto that uh, concave lens the refracted ray diverse okay and that refracted ray seems to be coming out from a particular point on the principal axis and that point we call it as focus got it so seems to be the word seems to be is there and the refracted ray diverse okay from a particular point and it all goes away like this so we may call this concave lens as divergent lens also right It will be all given here right you can pause it and you can uh, watch it at ease okay uh, let's try to switch on to the next word uh, slide all this you have learned this terminology you, you have learned in you might have learned in your uh, what your spherical mirrors these are all almost similar okay if you know very thoroughly about the uh, Th reflection through spherical surfaces then this will be also very easy got it let me switch on to the next what slide these are for the image formation by lenses okay take a convex lens find its approximate focal length in a way describing activity 10.1 activity 10.1 is not given here but uh, let's try to skip this part this will be somewhat uh, uh, somewhat uh, an activity based type and so we can't do it this one okay uh, but for the sake of simplicity I will skip this one and I will try to explain you in the next slide don't worry okay without doing this activity also you will be very easily understood okay if I explain you nicely now let's see the image formation in lens using ray diagrams okay there are some rules of drawing ray diagram for the formation of images what are those rules as we have done in the case of reflection here also in the case of reflex refraction also there are some rules to draw ray diagram it is very much similar to that of uh, that of reflection okay when a light ray passes parallel through the principal axis okay first let's take it for a convex lens when a light ray parallel to the principal axis after incident on through the lens the refracted ray passes through the focus okay the refracted ray passes through focus in the case of concave lens a light ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction what happened the refracted ray seems to be coming out from a particular point on the focus from the focus okay similarly what happened as i said in the case of convex ray this ray actually the refracted ray actually passes through a particular point on the principal axis known as focus okay and in the case of concave lens the refracted ray seems to be coming out from a particular point on the principal axis known as focus the word seems to be is there because the light has been refracted from here and this refracted ray seems to be coming okay from this particular point on the principal axis known as focus so these are known as focus okay mm -hmm. and now the second rule is just uh, the reverse of this part of the light ray suppose in the case of convex 
lens if a light ray passing through this focus okay passing through this focus like this and after incident onto this convex lens then the refracted ray will be what going parallel to the principal axis that is what it is shown here if a light ray incident passing through focus okay after incident onto that lens the refracted ray goes parallel to the principal axis same is the case in the case of concave lens if a light ray which is supposed to pass through focus which is supposed to pass through focus that means a light ray which is coming along this path okay the refracted ray will be going parallel to the principal axis right yes and the last one is what a light ray passing through the optical center of the lens both in the convex and the concave what happened the refracted ray goes without any deviation got it without any bending it will have to go along the path okay of that of the incident ray the refracted ray should have to go along the path of the incident ray so no bending take place when the light ray incident onto the optical center okay that is the case for this principal axis also when a light ray is passing through this principal axis that is also optical center passing through optical center so it goes without any bending right those are the rules for the drawing of ray diagrams through what lenses okay now let's see some image formation image formation in the case of convex lens first okay when the object is very far away at infinity the image will be formed at focus okay all the light rays coming from the uh, infinity can be taken as those light rays can be taken as parallel to the principal axis and those light rays parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focus by following the rule number one okay so all these refracted rays intersect at this point mid at this point so the image will be formed here and moreover these are the real refracted rays and so the image will be real so the when the object is at infinity the image will be formed at focus and the nature of the image will be what real if it is real it will be inverted okay so real inverted and highly diminished that means very very small okay next let's see when the object is brought near the center of curvature that means beyond the center of curvature even though it is near beyond the center of curvature we are trying to bring the object closer and closer and closer toward the lens okay so when the object is placed beyond the center of curvature what happen the image will be formed beyond <coughs> not beyond between what and what between focus and the center of curvature okay let me see the whole let me show you the whole picture okay like this yes so what happened a light ray parallel to the principal axis from this point a incident onto the convex lens and then after refraction it will pass through focus following that uh, uh, rule number one okay and a light ray passing through this optical center it will go without any bending and these two refracted ray intersect at this point so the image will be formed here got it so <clears throat> what happened when the object is beyond center of curvature image will be formed between what center of curvature and the focus got it and the nature of the image will be what a real because these are the two real refract refracted rays so real inverted and smaller in size when you compare with the object and the image the image size will be somewhat small than that of the object got it so the image will be of smaller size now let's see for that of the object when placed at the center of curvature the image will be formed at the center of curvature on the other side okay and in this case what happened the nature will be what real inverted and of same size this is the case only when the object and the image has of same size okay real inverted and of same size got it at what position of the object does convex lens form same size that of the object then the answer will be at center of curvature got it distance of the object we call it as object distance denoted by u this distance that will be also 
same with that of the image distance distance will be measured from the optical center to the image okay and denoted by v so your u and v are equal in this case now in the case when the object is placed between uh, what this center of curvature and the focus then what happened image will be formed beyond center of curvature now reversibility of light holds good no? in the case of the object when placed beyond center of curvature image was formed between f and c so if this is met as object then this would have been image that is what is happening now okay when the object is placed between this center of curvature and the focus image is formed beyond c right so same thing here in the case of the object when placed between what center of curvature and focus image will be formed beyond center of curvature right one ray following the rule number one parallel to principal axis it will, it will pass through focus and another ray and that means rule number three which passes through optical center it goes without bending and the two refracted real refracted ray meet here and the image will be formed here okay and the image is inverted and formed beyond center of curvature got it and it is magnified so the nature of the image will be what real inverted and enlarged you can see now when you uh, bring the object at focus okay the image will be formed at infinity in that case what happened the image will be what real inverted and highly enlarged that one it is not shown here okay so these are the table for those of the different positions of the objects with that of the positions so form uh, with that other position of the image so form and these are the nature of the images and relative size also given here so at infinity what happened the image will be formed at focus highly diminished real and inverted right so likewise for this beyond twice f the image will be formed between uh, what focus and center of curvature size is smaller so diminish real and inverted okay and this will be what between f and twice f beyond twice f that means beyond center of curvature enlarge real and inverted okay at focus it will be image will form at infinity infinitely large real and inverted but when it is between center of curvature uh, no no between focus and uh, optical center what happened the image will be formed on the same side of the object and it will be what enlarged but in this case it will be what virtual and erect okay the diagram is not shown here but you can draw it very easily or you can look out uh, to that of your uh, textbook also or if you want to make me draw then i can draw it here suppose uh, but uh, it will not be not nice because as I'm not drawing on the on a board with a, using your marker or pen okay now suppose if this is the convex lens for example this is a convex lens let's take it that this is the principal axis see it has been changed this is a principal axis let's take it or let me erase it okay this portion so let's take it that this is a principal axis okay and if this is taken as focus somewhere here center of curvature here and if the object is placed in between your optical center and the focus somewhere here like this then a light ray parallel to this principal axis okay it will have to converge or passing through this focus right suppose if this is also the focus focus then what happen the light ray will pass through focus like this got it passing through focus like this Another light ray which is passing through the optical center will have to pass like this, right? Uh, my mouse pad is not so uh, what smooth, that's why. You take it this as a refracted ray. So these two refracted rays seems to be 
uh, intersect somewhere there okay these two refracted rays seems to be coming some from somewhere from this point behind okay these two rays these two rays are the refracted virtual refracted ray okay actual refracted ray starts from here but this refracted ray seems to be coming out from somewhere there behind okay like this this ray also seems to be coming out from behind so these two refracted virtual refracted ray meet here and the image will be formed here got it so this will be the image for this object so what happened when the object is placed between what focus and optical center then what happened or within focus you can say the image will be formed on the same side of the object and the nature of the image will be what virtual because these are the virtual refracted rays so when they intersect it forms virtual image if it is virtual it will be erect okay the nature of the image will be what virtual erect and the relative size will be what enlarged got it this is a case when the object is what uh, having on the same side with that of the image okay so you may ask at what position of the object will the convex lens form virtual image then you have to say that when the object is placed within focus got it uh, that is what for today uh, let's try to see in the next class more about the what image formation by what concave lens got it